Hey everybody, how you doing? And welcome back for another GNS3 Lab video. We're now on to the fifth in the series for the I, uh, GNS3 Workbench ICMD1 series. So we've done all of these. We're now on to the IPv4 configuration test. So we have to know how to configure an IPv4 router with a few different features. So behind me is our goals for this video. We need to do uh, router name, secret password, exec mode password, telnet password, and we have some IPv4 addressing to come up with. Looks like we might have to figure out subnets and determine the correct routing protocol. So we have actually a couple of things to do on this one, and I haven't run through it yet. So we'll actually be figuring it out together for the first time. Um, let me see. We have our interfaces labeled on here. This is our switches, our routers. Let's start with, it looks like we're doing all of our configuration on Acme 3. So here is Acme 3. Let's just go in order. It says router name. So we know that we need to go to global config, which I'm already in global config. And we're going to say host name and then Acme 3. So that gives us our host name. That one's done. Enable secret password. So that um, when you do enable, you can either use the command password for a regular password or you can use secret for the encrypted MD5 hash version, which is what they're asking for. So we need to put that as Acme enable. So we just set our secret. The next one, it says access user exec mode password. Now I'm not sure what they're asking us for exactly here, because let me just show you the syntax here. If you go enable, first of all, if you put a password and a secret, secret always takes precedence over the password so no matter what password I set now since I've already enabled a secret you cannot use the password anymore you have to use the secret so I don't know why you would put both other than obviously it's a lab and they want you to know how to do it so if I put enable password then I can put my password in but let me show you the extra syntax that you have here if you want to you can actually manually set the level and the level can be from 1 to 15 and this is privilege level 15 is the highest and then 1 is the lowest so I don't know what each number gives you as far as permissions and privileges there might be a list out there on the internet somewhere but I, I know that exec mode is considered the highest which is level 15 and that happens to also be the default so if I create an enable password and I don't specify what level it is it's automatically a level 15 password so I don't know if maybe that's kind of a trick question, like you're just supposed to know that, hey, if you create a password, it's not going to be used because you have a secret already. And hey, exec mode is level 15, but level 15 is always the default, so there's no reason to specify it has to be a level 15 password. So we'll just go ahead and create our level 15 password. And they want that to be Acme EXEC. So that's done. Now we need to set a password for telnet access. So that's, uh, that's going to be under our lines, our VTY lines. So line VTY, and you want to usually put a range. 0 through 15 is the standard range. That way we can activate all 16 of those lines. There's actually 0 counting as a line. So uh, that will give us, maybe I need to do it like this or like this there we go so we have all 16 of those selected so we can configure them all at one time so we're going to say uh, password and we're going to put acme tell net all right so we have that password set ipv4 addresses serial assign the second assignable host address and then Ethernet assign the last assignable host. Let's see what we have up here. The uh, serial, it's using a slash 30. Slash 30 is very common for point to point links like this because it's a uh, block size of four and you lose two addresses, one for the network and one for the broadcast, leaving you with only two addresses. So you don't waste any IP addresses if you're using variable length subnet mask uh, and then you use a slash 30 on these interfaces. So one's already taken, we need to assign the free one. So let's go interface serial zero or one slash zero. I almost got that wrong. And it says the second assignable host. So 
the uh, 128 is the network 129 would be the first so 130 would be actually what we need to hear uh, 192 sorry IP address 192.0.2.130 and the subnet mask would be 255.255.255.252 and that was shut down so that's up now let's go into interface fast 00, zero. And it says assign the last assignable host. So we have a uh, 209.165.201.0 slash 27. Interesting. So let me do this in my head. A slash 27 would be 128, 164. It'd be a 32 block size. So the last address for here would be .30 would, would be the last. So we'll do IP address. 209.165.201.30 and now the subnet mask for that being 32 would be 224 okay do show IP interface brief let's look what we have here we have fast ethernet and serial both are up and up and it says to determine the right routing protocol. So I guess to do that, we would actually have to go to the other router and see what it has configured. Uh, Acme. Oh, you have a username and password on this. Interesting, interesting. So how how are we supposed to do that then? Is it listed? Hmm, now I'm actually stuck for a second. Your job is to configure It could be EIGRP, it could be OSPF, it could be static. I don't know how we're supposed to know without being able to get onto the other router or without just trial and error. Meaning if I try OSPF and I see OSPF working, then I know it works. So let's go back to Acme 3. Let me just do this real quick. A um, configure terminal, router, OSPF1, network. Zero, zero, zero. Area zero is always the, ah, uh, there we go. Looks like OSPF was the right one. So do show IP uh, route. And I see that we do have OSPF routes coming in. So that was the right one. Still though, I really wonder if that's what they had intended is for us just to do trial and error. But because there would have been no way for me to guess EIGRP autonomous system number it could have been anything under the sun with OSPF it doesn't matter the uh, process ID is local locally significant only so I can use anything I want it just matters that I have the right area and area zero is always what area you start with for OSPF and then static there's no way for us to know that there's static routes on the other router either so I'm assuming trial and error there's nothing else in here that says otherwise uh, there's a topology for us. Let's see what we have there. Yep, nothing. Well, that works. Let's go ahead and check our answers as they have asked us to. It says show protocols. So they want us to show our protocols. And then we're going to do the pipe. Exclude. Down. So they only want to see up. And looks like we have fast Ethernet and serial. That's good. Telnet, they want us to actually try to telnet into the address of fast zero zero. So it's gonna be telnet two. And that was one nine no, that was two oh nine one six five two oh one. 
And what address did we use? Two. It was 30. And we got Telnet prompt and it's asking us for a password. That should be uh, Telnet Acme Telnet. So AC. There we go. That worked. Next is going to be enter enable mode. So we need to exit out. And when we hit enable, it should prompt us for our secret. So the secret we used was Acme enable. So A C M E E N A B L E. That works. Uh, show IP. Okay, they want us to show that we have a secret, and the so we'll do show startup. See, uh, actually, startup config is not going to have it. Where uh, to do that, we would have to do a a save first. Whenever you're making configuration changes, you're making them to your running config. Startup config is what is going to be loaded when the router starts, but that's not going to actually be there until you save your running config to your startup config. Uh, that can be with WR is a common for write, and uh, that's what most people do. But the proper Cisco way is copy running config to startup config. And that would be the full command, and that would also do the same thing. So now if I say show startup. And I say include secret, it'll show our secret. So enable secret five, and then of course it's hashed, so you can't see what it is, but it is in there, so we verify that works. Show IP route is the next. I guess they want us to see our OSPF routes, which we do have one, so we know we get the right routing. They want us to ping, and they want us to use a source address. So let me see here. So we'll do ping 198.18.1.1 source and fast ethernet 00. And that was 100% successful. So that shows we have connectivity. And then they want us to exit this. And there's no reason to do disable. And exit again. So they want us to verify that we have our secret enable password there. So yeah, looks like everything is working. So this lab was complete. That was kind of an interesting one for configuration. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was Vicious, and I'll see you next time.